everyone and welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate and today we're talking all about the top 10 cursed books you shouldn't read. I love a good book. This year I'm trying to read a book a month which I know doesn't sound like a lot but with work and hobbies and stuff it's a fair goal for me. Right now I'm reading Cloud Atlas recommended by Danny. Very good book. What is your favourite book? What are you reading right now? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also guys while you're there why don't you hit on that thumbs up button and share this video with a friend who needs to learn about cursed books today. Also, if you want to connect with me on social media, my link is in the description box. Alright, this book seems to be a favourite amongst murderers at number 10. We have The Catcher in the Rye, which you shouldn't read unless you want to go mad. Oddly, The Catcher in the Rye seemed to inspire two very high profile shootings, the murder of John Lennon and the attempted murder of Ronald Reagan. John Lennon was shot dead on the 8th of December 1980 by Mark David Chapman. The lone gunman from Texas was found to be obsessed obsessed with JD Salinger's novel and was found calmly reading it on a curb nearby his attack on Lennon prior to his arrest. It seems he wrote his statement inside the novel too. He felt like if he carried out the assassination he would become Holden Caulfield, the protagonist of the novel. Five months later on March the 30th 1981, John Hinckley carried out an assassination attempt on the 40th President of the United States, Ronald Reagan. It seems that Hinckley's motivation was a weird attempt to win over actress Jodie Foster whom he had an obsession with. When Hinckley was caught, he was found with a copy of none other than The Catcher in the Rye. Coming in at number 9, we have The Orphan's Story. This story was written by a Malaga monk between 1608 and 1615. Now it's about an orphan from Granada who travelled to the Spanish Empire to seek his fortune. For some reason, the transcripts never made it to print and everyone that seemed to be associated with it died. The manuscript was lost for centuries, some say hidden away because of the curse. Then a string of publishing attempts failed and people just started dying. The book however is to be finally published. Belinda Palacios, a Peruvian editor, said that she was regularly warned off the project because of the string of untimely deaths associated with the book. She said it's taken a while because the people who have worked on it died from one strange disease or in car accidents. I think that this is one book that I would steer clear of. Okay, this book may kill you but not because of demons or devils but because of cancer. Wait, a book that gives you cancer? Awful. That's right, coming in at number 8, we have Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451. When Bradbury's 1953 book about a dystopian future came out, the marketing team had a wise idea. The book is about a group of so called firemen who burn down the homes and belongings of people who read illegal, non state approved books. Wouldn't it be cool for the limited edition books to be fireproof? It sure would. The only issue was that people didn't know what was what in the 1950s and the book was bound with asbestos. You know, the substance that gives you lung cancer. Not great. So while the book in itself is a bit of a scary read, the reality of the book is even scarier. Coming in at number 7 we have the Voynich Manuscript. Who knows what is happening and what is contained within the text of the Voynich Manuscript. The text is regularly alluded to as the world's most mysterious book. Written in the early 15th century, what the 240 page cryptic text actually says is still a mystery and it has baffled humans for 600 years. It appears to be written in an unknown language and contains strange illustrations and diagrams. The book has been passed down from emperors and important members of society, eventually falling into the hands of a Polish book dealer. A 2006 book by Nicholas Pelling claims that the text is cursed. Others think that it was secretly dropped on earth by aliens. There are hopes that Canadian computer scientists may have invented a machine that will be able to decode the enigmatic text. Who knows what we'll discover. Almost as intriguing as what the text said is who or what wrote it. We still don't know. Coming into number 6, we have the Codex Gygas. The Codex is a hefty old chap weighing 165 pounds, so more than me. The text heralds from the 12th century and is referred to as the Devil's Bible. Why? Well, according to the legends, the monk who wrote the text had broken his vow and was due to be walled to death. So, what actually happens when somebody is walled to death? Well, it's a bit like being buried alive, but instead you're bricked up in a wall, like in a really, really small space until until you run out of air and die in the wall. Really not ideal. In fact I feel like it happens in an episode of Jonathan Creek so if anyone watches that, 
shout out to you. Anyway, the night before his death, he wanted to create a book on all human knowledge, but he realized that, you know what, that's actually not a long time to write a book. He summoned Lucifer and asked him to finish it for him in exchange for his already damned soul. Apparently, this is why there's a picture of the devil in the manuscript. But it's not just any picture, it's a 19 inch tall picture. So, a text written by the devil, surely no good can come from reading it. Coming into number five, we have the Book of Soiger. The Book of Soiger is an early 16th century treatise on demonology written in Latin. There are only two copies of the book in the world, and one was possessed by Elizabethan scholar John Dee, who spent his life trying to interpret the text. Basically, the text is filled with spells and rituals, and it's kind of creepy. He had a pretty good grasp of what was happening, except for the final 36 pages, which he simply couldn't decipher. He and his trusted friend Edward Kelly summoned the spirit Uriel to tell them the meaning of the last pages. Now, the legend says that Uriel possessed Kelly and spoke through him. He claimed that the book came into existence when Adam entered paradise and that it could only be properly interpreted by Archangel Michael himself. He also said that whoever does decipher the meaning of the final 36 pages will be destined to die two and a half years after they do so. Coming into number four, we have the prophecies of Nostradamus. Did Nostradamus curse us or were his texts a warning? The 16th century French physician wrote a collection of 942 poetic prophecies, many of which have come true. A lot of people think that these quatrains were, like his grave, cursed. If he had the power to curse his grave, why wouldn't his poetry be cursed? Nostradamus famously prophesied the Great Fire of London, the death of King Henry II, the French Revolution, vaccination, the rise of Hitler, the atomic bombs, 9-11 and more. We just don't know what they are yet. Reading these texts may not curse you, but then again, knowledge of a terrible event without the ability to change the outcome must be a great curse indeed. Coming into number three, we have The Great Omar. The Francis Sangorski special edition of The Great Omar is for sure cursed. Not only was the original one of the most blinging books around, it seemed to be on the receiving end of some seriously bad juju. Emblazoned with gold leaf, gemstones, and peacock feathers, the original copy of The Great Omar sank on board the Titanic and is lost somewhere in the North Atlantic Ocean. Sangorski then died just six weeks later as he drowned in an accident in the English Channel. A second copy was made by Stanley Bray, recreating the original. Now that copy was destroyed in the London Blitz. A third copy was then painstakingly recreated by Bray once again, who died just five years later. When asked about the book's tragic history, Bray said, I'm not in the least bit superstitious, even though they do say that the peacock is a symbol of disaster. I'll say. Now the only surviving copy now lays in the British Library. Visit, if you dare. This isn't a book up next, but it is a poem which really is just kind of a short lyrical book. Now, I'm not sure you're ready for this, but people who read this poem are doomed to die. In at number two, we have Tomino's Hell. I know that all men must die and all of that, but Tomino's Hell is said to speed the process way up. The poem is a 1919 Japanese work of literature that is cursed, 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 and cursed again. It's supposed to cause death and tragedy if you read it aloud, so just don't do it. The poem tells the story of a young boy's damnation, his sickness as he vomits its blood and travels to the blackest of hells. Lovely jubbly. It isn't just Japanese readers who need to be a bit worried. The poem has been translated into English. Now, reading the poem is fine, feel free, even though it is kind of gross. What you don't want to do, though, is read it aloud in any language, unless, you know, well, just actually don't do it. Finally, at number one, we have one of the most cursed and spooky books in the entire history of print. We have The Grand Grimoire. The Grand Grimoire is often referred to as the Gospel of Satan or the Red Dragon Text. And it is a book of spells believed to possess insane powers, but beyond that, it's said to be one of the most intense and potent occult books in existence. Written in the 16th century, the incantation book tells the reader how to summon the dead, and also how to summon powerful demons. Deeper sections of the book allegedly tell the reader how to do a deal with the devil. The book was said to be written by a man who was possessed by Satan. Now, the original text is so dangerous that it is allegedly held in storage by the Vatican secret archives. The book is so mysterious and famous that it is frequently referenced in pop culture. So there we have it, that was the top 10 curse books you should never read. Can you think of any more? Do you like these curse lists? Do you believe in any of it? Or do you think, you know what, Rebecca, they're just books? Also, should we do 
movies or TV shows next? Let me know. Also, don't forget to let me know what you're reading and what your favourite book is. Before I get out of here, I just want to read some comments from a recent video. I created the top 10 scary abandoned hospitals, and this is what you had to say. Swifty Runner 89 said, I don't know why these asylums look so scary, yet very artistically beautiful. I totally agree. I really love kind of decaying beauty and haunting beauty. I love abandoned places too, even though they're pretty scary. Penny Potter said, Rebecca, can you do top 10 Chuck E. Cheese urban legends? I don't know. Do you think that there are 10 Chuck E. Cheese urban legends? Like, maybe? Maybe? Haunted cheese? I don't know. Angel Queen said, sits in comments eating pizza. Not brave enough yet. I need more time, don't mind me. Okay. Firstly, say what you want, but secondly, do you have any pizza? Because I'm feeling really, really hungry. My favourite is Veggie Supreme. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Also, you guys seem to be fans of my shiny velvet top, so to that, I say thank you. I'll wear it in more videos. Thank you guys for tuning into this video. I do hope you enjoy our spooky content. I love bringing it to you. Don't forget to leave a good thumbs up, share this video with a friend, stay subscribed for more most amazing lists, and of course, if you want to connect with me on social media, my link is in the description box. I'm Rebecca Felgate, and I will see you next time. <laughs>